There's a demon. There's a demon in Kenya that will keep us in a cycle of disrespecting debut presidents. There is a demon in Kenya. And I sense this because we prayed before we the new government. And the demon as a singular reason and assignment to keep the country stagnated. Anytime we get into this kind of thing, this kind of cycle, this demon, when you become a devil president in Kenya, it's like you have signed a death sentence or a humiliation sentence. And this demon can only be finished by people like us. William Ruto survived as a David president because of one reason. He trusted God for wisdom. God gave him wisdom that he kept quiet. He never responded to his president until the ninth year. Baka Maka Watisa. He never responded. That's how he survived. I'm not saying that our current deputy president will not survive because he's too talkative. This kind of demon, you cannot fight it by speaking. There are demons you fight by silence. <laughs> this Kenya, as I had a problem with deputy presidents, we have been praying for the presidents and the presidents, but Kenya, as I had a problem with David Preston from day one, 1963, until now. Is that true or is false? You ask of anybody, the, the, the Murumbas, everybody, as I had a problem. Count them and see which David Preston finished his time, except Ruto. There is a problem now. We are getting into a new version of David President where junior officers can abuse to the level of calling a David President as a snake. That is not our country. Is that our country? How many of you are happy with that? And that, that problem, I spoke it a few months ago. That problem will be very common here in this country if we do not do something. And I, I'm, I want to request the president of Kenya and the people of Kenya and the ministers of gospel to pray that this problem comes to an end. And I talked to the deputy president as well to embrace wisdom. Embrace wisdom and be silent. There is nobody on earth that has been successive as a result of pride and arrogance. Every successful person has benefited out of humility. And uh, I talked to the deputy president, embraced the character of David of the Bible. He was anointed, but he considered himself to be a madman for the sake of safeguarding the anointing. You can do everything stupid to save the anointing. Even as ministers of the gospel, there are a lot of things we can do. But sometimes we accept it to go stupid. Stupid for the sake of the gospel. There are a lot of things we can do. There are a lot of opportunities we have. But we go stupid. To save the anointing. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the process of saving the anointing, you can have some regrets. You can sometimes wonder why you did not do what you were supposed to do. Why did you did not take advantage of the opportunity? But I beg you as a church of Christ that has been ordained and mandated by God to save this nation. The economy of this nation will never, never improve if the presidency is shaky. There's no family 
that can finish a project if they are not united. United we stand. Divided we fall. I want you to lift up your hands this morning and pray once again. There is a time we prayed for the deputy president Rigathi Gashawa. We have to pray for the sake of this nation. The bigger picture is the nation of Kenya. And the devil is, is fighting what we call revival. The more we delay in these gimmicks of the debit president, the president, the majority, the minority, I don't know what. If we are moving around that circle, revival will definitely delay. And for this revival to be in time, if there is no church in Kenya that can pray, this one has to pray. We are about to pray for the debit president. There are so many people that have lined up to become debit presidents already. So many. When you don't see far, you are so sighted.